probably die trying to go somewhere else. Well, that reminds me, I have to, I have to go down the other way. That'll probably help make up for the time I lost doing it the last time. God, shit. I feel many. Huh. So apparently... Apparently the, uh... The Allies succeeded where we failed. I don't know how... much worse off we would be if I never did the, um... those two or three, um, like, suicidal charges with warrior women that cleared away half of the, um, of Caesar's line. Well, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to remember, um, Uh, it's hard to remember how many suicidal charges I did, because I, you know, I died so many times. So I was redoing things. So how many I actually finished, you know, sent them actually there, and then brought Hotel and, um, Larex back. Wait, Adatel was, a uh, was part of the, um, she was part of, uh, a side quest, so does that mean that I would have never gotten access to her 50 warrior woman if I hadn't completed that side quest? I have no idea. I don't think they would be that mean as to not give you the, um, extra 50 warrior women, but, um, yeah. Let's, uh, finish this bit of dialogue off. Ha <laughs> ha! It seems that the Lion of Rome turned out to be nothing more than a puppy. We have won, men! See how Caesar flees the battlefield! Well, we... We killed him, didn't we? Wasn't that the, uh, objective? Well, he, he, there's dialogue with, of his at the end that I know, because I saw the ending of this in the Let's Play. Rejoice, all! We have crushed our enemies! The might of Rome proved to be no match for our combined strength. I expect Caesar or others like him shall return one day. But let, not, let that not worry us. We shall be ready, and let the world and the world world's entire. But the entire world shall know that none could enter the lands of the Gauls uninvited. <laughs> what? This cannot be! No one could defeat the mighty Caesar! This would but a practice. The real battle is but to start. I shall leave this cursed place now, yet soon I shall return. And when I do, you pay for this insult. See the dark, foreboding, evil-looking Stonehenge. With the blocks. So I was achieved a great victory, where goals stood as one. Even without the power of the goddess, Larex continued to fight. For the war against Rome was far from over. And that's the victory screen. Uh Hello, everybody. I recorded this Celtic King's Rage of War Let's Play in spring and summer of 
2020 and it's now the end of March 2022 and I've finally gotten around to um, actually cataloging all of the footage and getting rid of the uh, the uh, the bits of uh, recorded material that uh, I'd rather not have in the final product and I'm starting to upload it uh, more and more um, piece by piece as the days go by. Uh, and I'm putting this at the end of the last mission uh, because at the time uh, in 2020 when I uh, had recorded uh, the last mission, I had uh, given some thoughts on um, how I think the game uh, has held up uh, over all the years that I've been uh, aware of it. Uh, but unfortunately, my thoughts weren't that well, um, uh, you know, I wasn't able to get them out in, in a way that uh, sounded uh, eloquent. So I'm, uh, I'm re-recording my thoughts uh, now based off of what I could gather from uh, the descriptions that I did make uh, back in 2020. So I really don't like uh, the last mission. There's a lot of missions I didn't like, but you know, at the time I was sort of fuming and 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 really stressed out about the last mission. You know, just to, just to really like give a, a broader overview of it. Um, you you have a bunch of ally towns that you have to micromanage all at once, and some of the uh, soldiers that are spawned in each town are under your control and some of them aren't and some of the colors of different teams uh, that uh, are on the field uh, on your side some of the different colored troops are ones that you can control and some of them aren't uh, so each team has a certain number of troops in a certain color that you can control and uh, soldiers in that same color that you can't. So that's really confusing. And the fact that you have to micromanage all of those towns is very confusing. Um, that, and each town uh, has soldiers that replenish themselves fairly quickly. Uh, but the downside to that is that the enemy just magically spawn soldiers like every second like literally every like 20 seconds or so another giant stack of principes or praetorians or what have you you know just comes out of nowhere uh you know that's not really the way that most rts missions go most rts missions you have a a goal to actually punch through a city you know, that has a lot of defending soldiers and maybe you, it takes two or three times to actually get through, uh, you know, but you have something you can actually do that um, decreases their ability to uh, fight back. But, you know, not, not in this case, it's just endless stalemate unless you figure out like some weird way of getting up to Caesar's line, you know, as I mentioned uh, near the end, you know, having to take a hundred soldiers, uh, you know, some of the highest level uh, soldiers, um, uh, the highest, uh, the most powerful uh, soldier type in the game, probably the woman warriors, uh, and sort of bring them up into the mountains while stealthily trying to avoid the hordes of Romans that would just come out of every direction um, and ambush Caesar's line and then bring Larix and Autotel back down to the other far end of the map and then do it again, you know, stealthily going up into the mountains and, and, and all that and then uh, attacking them for the flank. Uh, you would, uh, you're obviously, you, you know, you get more heroes as time goes on, you get um, Luthal and then Autotel and I think probably if I had actually completed that uh, story with Metalis uh, in the last go around instead of just, uh, you know, 
doing Auditel uh, again, um, I may have gotten help from Metalese. And then maybe I've even gotten help from the uh, the Island of the Woman Warriors. I don't know, because I never actually did the, uh, the um, uh, quest with Leprian and the Woman Warriors. Uh, but you had no idea when these heroes were coming, or even if they were coming. Uh, you really had no idea of like how they were meant to help you get to Caesar. Uh, you know, it really seems like they just phoned this in, but the end of the game, you know, there was not even the slightest bit of plot description or dialogue uh, explaining possible avenues to get up to Caesar. Um, which would sort of make sense for a mission where you could actually train your own soldiers and where, you know, there wasn't like constant endless enemies that came out of nowhere because then you, you would actually be able to um, wait it out if you needed to or, you know, uh, research upgrades or uh, different soldier types, you know. Uh, and take your time and move around to different uh, sections of the map to figure it out, uh, figure out your best plan of attack. But you know, when you're just, when you just never stop moving and you're constantly uh, trying to defend against literally endless enemies, like it, it, it really, you know, you don't have time for strategy. You don't have time to think. And of course, um, by the end. It was the allies that ended up killing Caesar for me, uh, and I wasn't even expecting that. Uh, so I probably won't play this again for another few years, if at all. Despite the fact that I honestly do like the story and the atmosphere of wandering amongst the tribal villages with their wooden gates and their walls and the winding forest pathways, especially the weirder, spookier levels where you're just surrounded by rocks and sand and meeting all the different tribal chieftains. All the characters are really well done, as long as they have more than a paragraph or two of dialogue, you know, they really stick out to me. And really, the dialogue is pretty good. Uh, there's nothing in it that I would say comes off as awkward or unprofessional or poorly written in any way at all. Uh, none of it is cheesy or campy. It takes itself seriously without being overly morose and angsty all the time, like so many uh, stories. Uh, I honestly think almost no one would spot that this dialogue wasn't originally written in English. I like the magical realism of it. You know, the, the fact that there are these druids uh, wandering around that are that could possibly be some sort of secretive order that controls parts of the political structure of Gaulish society in some clandestine way, and they sort of look down on the general population. Not uh, not all of my favorite stories, but a lot of them are set in settings that are historical, but they're historical settings with just a tinge of magic or the supernatural in them. Uh, where that magic is sort of just accepted as normal and presented very subtly and, I guess you could say, matter-of-factly, as opposed to the main characters discovering or uncovering the source of magic themselves, um, in a way, you know, where, where it wasn't immediately apparent that there was magic. Uh, the Cave of Mystery, the Cave of the Summoner, whatever that's called, is very spooky and unfortunately I think it was a bit of a missed opportunity um, in terms of actually fleshing that out. Like, how did those druids and that summoner and those magically empowered wolves get there? What was Kathibodawa's backstory in terms of setting up the cave? Even though, of course, we know that she likes to use mortals as pawns in her plans and she doesn't really care for humanity at all. But, uh, deeper explanation of her cave and what she can do and what she can't do in the world uh, would have been good. Um, the soundtrack is great. It's, it's better than a game of this level of production quality has any right to be really good. Uh, probably the two biggest problems that don't have to do with the main like criticism of this game that really comes down to subjectivity 
you know, but it's my main criticism, which is the balancing of the AI strengths with your own strengths in battle. But, you know, that's really subjective. Uh, the two most serious ones that are a bit more objective are, one, the select party button for those times where you have to direct Laryx somewhere, but unfortunately the only way to automatically select Laryx is to hit that button where Leldrin and Orthoric, depending on what uh, period of the game you're in, are also automatically selected. You can figure up the uh, number group mechanic eventually as a uh, as a welcome alternative to select party, uh, but although it might be second nature to some to use the uh, number group mechanics, uh, I generally find it to be unnecessary in RTS games because I'm pretty good at clicking and dragging. But you really need to use number groups in this game, uh, both for large-scale battles and invasions, as well as just to stop Lildren from accidentally getting selected and getting himself killed. Uh, so you really could have done away with that select party button. But that leads into my second and biggest problem. Uh, the reason why you even need the select party button in the first place is due to the really still incredible to me fact that there is no actual minimap. Instead, you have to click into a separate huge screen with the entire map of the level displayed out before you and watch your groups of soldiers walking around and yeah, yeah, so on and so forth. You know, if you've, if you've uh, played through this game, obviously you spend a huge amount of time in that minimap, uh, or really the, you know, the opposite of a minimap, a huge map, uh, but it's still like really unwieldy and strange. Um, I also wanted to point out uh, just how strange it is uh, uh, in terms of the, the way that you switch missions uh, and the fact that it's based off of uh, one of the levels' map just sort of transforming into another level's map rather than having a mission menu where you can pick any mission you'd like uh, as long as you've completed it before. Uh, I think really the only way to get a good sense of an RTS's storyline is to be able to go back and replay things at your own pace. So the idea that you have to personally make a save at the beginning of a level and just keep a bunch of old save games in your copy of a game in order to experience each level when you feel like it is, is really weird. Uh, but, but those were my main thoughts uh, back when I uh, recorded the, the final narration uh, in 2020. Uh, so I'll leave it at that, and uh, I hope everyone enjoyed. Uh, I can tell you for certain that I will be uploading a long-form Cyberpunk to, to uh, 2077 review, but other than that, that's about all I can tell you. You know, I had plenty of plans for different reviews of different games. Um, that I described in uh, throughout the course of the Let's Play, you know, back in 2020. But either those games uh, were too hard for me to really get a good sense of to do a review, or I just lost interest in them, or, or, or something like that. Uh, so just be on the lookout for Cyberpunk, and apart from that, you know, who knows what will happen. So I hope everyone has had a good day, and see you guys when I see you.